Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, the birthplace of modern architecture. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're doing great. I'm doing well. Today we're going to look at using Grasshopper and the plugin Kangaroo to look at minimal surfaces. And here you see an example of actually two minimal surfaces. And let's change this to shade to see this a little better. So we're looking at one minimal surface, which is horizontal, and another which is vertical. And these are joined together. So what is a minimal surface? So this image, I think, best, subscribe, best describes it. What we have here is two rings and we have a soap bubble spanning between the two rings and what you're going to see is it actually forms a catenoid and a catenoid is a catenary arch that is revolved around this circle and the surface takes the minimum area so it is an optimized surface and when you google search minimal surfaces you get all these really great images and there's a lot you can do with this some really great possibilities now, Fry Auto used minimal surfaces in a lot of his studies, his design studies. And this is a famous one that led to a lot of his tensile structures, like the, like the one that can be found for the Munich Olympics in Munich, Germany. I thought this one was pretty cool, too. This is a, a, a chair, someone looking at minimal surfaces and designing a chair. And here you see the catenoid that I was describing earlier. Okay, before we jump into the tutorial, since my last video, we did hit 5,000 subscribers. So I want to thank you to everyone out there that has subscribed to the channel. It's growing, and I truly appreciate that. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click on the subscribe and click on the little bell to get all the notifications. It's great connecting with all of you out there. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name underscore my last name. So we made 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now I'm looking to get a thousand followers on Instagram. And you can always see what I'm up to, what my students and I are working on, a little family fun there. Um, so go ahead and connect with me on Instagram. All right, so let's jump into this tutorial. Okay, before we start out from scratch, let's look at a couple of functional parameters in this tutorial. And I, I have to say, this tutorial, um, it, it took me a while actually to put this together because the minimal surfaces, or I should say the live soap capsule for kangaroo, took a little while to figure out. There's a lot of little tweaks that you have to make in here and I, I uh, admittedly I tried to do this with my students without a lot of I start I tried to do this with my students in class without a lot of preparation and let's just say it didn't go too well so hopefully this goes a little bit better so there's a couple things that we can do here uh, we can look at the strength of this minimal surface and how strong it is when it's spanning between the two boundary edges so I'm adjusting that right there and a little bit of a bonus here is we can actually interact with this in the Rhino window so I'm going to turn that on and now I'm clicking my cursor in the Rhino window and you see that that is affecting the minimal surface so we'll look a little bit closer at that it's, it's actually really fun to do this and we'll look a little bit closer to that as we get into the t tutorial. All right, so let's let's just go ahead and I'm going to start this from scratch. So we'll go ahead and delete all these objects, close down this definition here. Okay, so we're going to start from scratch with we're going to start with a mesh box. So I'm going to go ahead and create a mesh box. And you can experiment with how many faces for the mesh box. 
the default for the x, y, and z is going to be 10 for all three of those. I've previously set mine to 6, 6, and 6, so it understands that. Now, I found that the minimal surfaces work best with a ratio of basically 1 to 2. So if I make this mesh box, I'm going to make it 12 units. So you see each one of those squares is 1 unit. Uh, so I'm going to make this 12 units by 6 units high. So there I have that box. And I'm actually going to copy this. So I'm going to keep my original. And I'm going to go ahead and hide that one. Okay, so what I need is I need some open sides to this mesh box. So I'm going to explode it. And then I'm going to delete the two ends. And then these are going to become my my fixed boundaries, like we saw in that soap example, those red circular wire structures that were holding the soap in place. That's what these edges are going to become. Okay, so I need to join this back together. I need to select it and type in join. Okay, so that is joined together. All right, so let's bring this mesh into Grasshopper. So I'm just double clicking and typing mesh and I'm going to use a mesh container. And I'm going to right click and choose set one mesh. And I'm going to choose that mesh. Okay, so we're going to need a few capsules. So before I bring out the live soap capsule, I'm going to look first at what is called a plastic rod. So from Kangaroo, we're going to bring out the plastic rod. Let's, let's see if I could find that on the first try. So close. <laughs> All right. So let's see where my, my plastic rod is. Here's my plastic rod. Okay. All right. So here's my plastic rod. And that's going to require some poly lines to be plugged in. Okay. So what are the plastic rods? What are they going to be? The plastic rods are going to be these open boundaries on either side. And why am I using a plastic rod? Well, what the plastic rod is going to do for me <clears throat> excuse me, is it's, it's going to basically create a rod much like a pole vaulter uses. So it's going to allow those fixed edges to bend and twist. So it allows for bending and twisting. So that's going to be very helpful for me. And I found some, some interesting uh, websites. This one I thought was really cool, the geometry of bending. So one to take a look at. Okay, so that's, that's why we're using this. So I mentioned we need these edges. So the way that I'm going to get those edges is I'm going to use the mesh edges capsule. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So we're working with the naked edges, the open boundaries, not, the, not these interior edges. That's going to happen automatically. So I need these boundary edges. So that's going to be my naked edges. And if you see coming out of the naked edges, it's just a whole bunch of lines. They're not joined together. So it's the line between here and here and here and so on. So I want to join those together. So I'm going to use a join curves. And I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so now it's two polyline curves coming out of that. So one on the right and one on the left. That's exactly what I need. So those are going to be my rods. Okay, so we have that. We have our rods. Now I also need to anchor those. Okay, I need to anchor those rods so that they stay in place, that they don't move. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to use a plastic rod for that. I'm sorry, we have a plastic anchor. I'm going to use a plastic anchor for that. So I'm going to pull down my plastic anchor. Okay, now the points for those anchors, they're going to be at the, let's say, the start point of every one of these lines. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a line container just so we can see that a little bit better. So 
There's my line container. Okay, there's a, a bunch of lines in there, as we saw before. And I'm going to use a start, a start point. Actually, it's a, it's an endpoints, endpoints capsule. Okay, and I'll plug that in. Okay, and these are going to become all of my anchors. So I'll plug that in. Okay, so we have the rods, we have the ink, the fixed anchors. Okay, I'm going to be hiding some of this stuff as we go. <clears throat> Okay, so the last kangaroo capsule that we need at the moment is going to be the live, live soap. Let's see if I can get this one right. There it is. All right, so that's, that's our live soap. Okay, and that's looking for the mesh. All right, so that's going to be our mesh. And we'll look at some of these. There's a lot of other inputs for the three of these main capsules. And we'll look at some of those in a little bit. Okay. So now you notice that the plastic anchor has a reset here. And the live soap has a reset. So it's important that we are resetting those okay, when we make major changes. And we're going to see that our bouncy solver also has a reset. So there is the bouncy solver. I like the bouncy solver. All right, and let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so the goal objects are going to be the plastic rod. I keep calling it a plastic rod. It's really just a rod. The plastic anchor. And instead of plugging these directly in, that's always a bad idea. So we're going to use a, a merge. We're going to plug these into the merge. So this actually, I'm going to unplug that. Okay, so the rod went into data one. The plastic anchor goes into data two. Live soap goes into data three. We're going to add something else. Now I always flatten this, okay, because I have a tree coming in. I have some. Uh, multiple item lists, some single item lists. So I'm going to flatten that out. And this is going into my goal objects. Okay, so you see something's already happening in in the Rhino window. So we're going to take a little, we're going to take a closer look at that. All right, just setting this up as best as possible. All right, so that's that's what we need for the beginning. What you see on the screen right there. Okay, so let's let's set this up so that we can see what the output is a little bit better. So, I'm going to I'm going to hide the mesh in Rhino. So, we'll go ahead and hide that. And then I'm also going to hide all of these capsules that we've made. So now, coming out of the bouncy solver is a list. And the first item in the list is my mesh. So I'm going to use a list item. And by default, list items are set to a list item of index 0. Right here, this is the index of 0. OK, and to see this even better, I'm going to use a custom preview. And I'll turn the preview off for this as well. Right, so we're just seeing that, that output. OK, so at the moment, it's not working. It's not spanning the minimal surface. So what we can start by looking at is what we can start looking at is to adjust the bend strength. Okay, so here is our bench strength here. And right now that is set to 1. So I'm going to make a number slider for the bench strength between 0 and, let's say, 0 and 250. Okay, and I'm going to plug that in. 
Okay, so that default was zero. So we're gonna add we're gonna add some strength, this bend strength. Now it's not gonna update for me in real time without resetting this button. Okay, so let's let's crank that bend strength way up. Okay, looks like it wants to go even higher. So let's let's look at a couple. I told you this one was going to be tricky. So let's look at a couple of the other values here. Okay, so we have a length factor and we have an angle factor. Okay, that length factor is one. That one I'm going to leave and we'll look at that in more detail a little bit later. We have the target angle. So I'm going to set this between zero and set this between zero and say one. Add some decimal places here. Okay. I'm getting some awesome stuff happening on the screen here. Let's take down that bench strength a little bit. Alright, so we're not, it doesn't look like we're too far away here. Okay, there we go. We stabilized it. Success. Very excited about that because for I tell you, for the longest time, I was actually changing the proportions of the mesh box, and I'm very happy that I don't have to change the proportions. I can make it and then adjust a couple number sliders here. So the angle factor and the bend strength, those two together, are making that work for me. Okay, so that's working well. All right, so where do we want to go with this? We've looked at the very basics of it, live soap, plastic rod, plastic anchor. We're gonna look at grabbing this. I guess now is as good a time as any to actually interact with it. So let's go ahead and do that. It looks like we're gonna look at Weaver Bird too and helps if, uh, helps if I can spell that right. Okay, good. All right, so let's let's add the grab to this. I'm gonna actually save this. Not a bad idea. All right, so let's look at let's look at grab. Okay, grab is part of part of kangaroo. Now, am I gonna be able to find grab? Let's see. Yeah, there's grab. All right. Okay, so that that has an on off. So that has a boolean toggle. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. It has a strength and it has a range. So let's uh, let's look at that strength. Let's make a number slider. Let's go big between zero and one thousand. Crank that up. Because what's it right now? It's at one. Oh yeah, we're really cranking it up. All right, and then there's a range, which is affecting, it says maximum distance from which to grab points. So let's add, I'm going to type in 110 so that it gives me something, number slider, bigger than 100. Okay, and this is going to end up going into our merge. So we'll plug that in, and I can always get rid of it always puts an extra one, but I can always get rid of it by zooming in and clicking on the negative because we have everything that we need now. Okay, let's turn that to true. And go ahead, I'm going to try to get the edge of this. There we go. Now, I have a feeling that it's bouncing back a lot. There, I broke it, that's fun. I have a feeling that it's bouncing back a lot because the because it's strong the bench strength is pretty strong on it so I'm not getting a whole lot of deformation but I'm getting some and once you reset this it goes back to the original 
Okay, so let's let's go ahead and turn that off because it can get really tough to work with that being on. It's it's live. It takes a lot of computer processing. All right, so let's now let's look at getting the two minimal surfaces. So we have this horizontal minimal surface. Let's look at setting up a, a vertical surface. So I have that original box that I made. I have a whole bunch of them here. So let me get rid of some of these. Okay, so there's the original one that we made. I'm going to make a copy of that because we might go back to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that. Place it up here. And we'll hide this one. Okay, so this one I want, I want it to be open on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and explode it. And I'll delete the top and I'll delete the bottom. And then I'm going to join it together. Now, something that you want to look at is you want to look at that this is going to work as a minimal surface be before you combine these two together. So let's do that. Let's let's set this as our mesh. So right click, set one mesh. All right, now I'm going to have to use my reset button. All right, good news. Good news there. That's working, it's spanning between. Okay, so now I can, what I can do is I can join these two together. Now, to join these two together, you see that they're going to share a face. They're going to share that face and that face. So not, both of them shouldn't have a face. So let's explode that one. And let's delete that face. And then we'll take this one, we're going to move it. And then we are going to join these. And we'll reset that to the mesh. Let's see, did that come in? Let's try that again. It may have come in, but we'll try it one more time. Set one mesh. Okay, let's let's see what happens when we reset that. Wow, I am super excited let's hide that okay so the way we're approaching this is working we made sure that both of them were working with the settings and then when we combine both of them they're still working all right so we're in a we're in a good place here so this is going to allow us to look a little closer at some of the other inputs so let's go let's go to the rod so that's a length factor that says Target edge length as a multiple of current length. Target edge length as a multiple of current length. So that's what that's telling me is we can get this to grow, to grow and or shrink. Okay, so let's let's just look at these. Let's set this definition up. Allow more number sliders. All right, so this length factor. Right now it's set to one. Okay, which is the length is what the length is. It's not growing or shrinking. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to set this up to be between negative 10 and positive 10. Okay, so this is the length factor. Oh, I love that. All right, now I'm going to keep this, keep this reset button close by during this process. So I reset it. Awesome, I bet you guys are loving that. All right, so let's, let's take it easy there on what we're applying to this. All right, so one, let's go to one. One is our original, two. Right, so I think that these values are, are just too big. So let's, let's look at adding some decimal places. How about, how about three? All right, so you see that that is, there we go. You see it's growing and shrinking. I think t negative values are, are useless. All right, 
let's reset that. All right, so we have some some functionality here. All right, so you can get some really, you know, some different forms than you imagined. Let's put this back at. So that's larger than one. So that's going to be that's similar, but but definitely larger. Okay, so let's let's put that back at one. Okay. Our angle factor, we saw that that was, that was really important in getting the initial, the initial shape to work. That's a little bit different. Now, there we go. We see some, some things happening live there. Okay. And I would think that, Look at the larger, the more curvature on the ends, on the boundary edges, but I'm not exactly getting that. Okay, let's reset it though, because these values might change. Okay, axial strength. The default for that is 10. So let's try between 0 and, I don't know, 50. Add the decimal places in to begin with. Doesn't like zero, right? Let's crank it up a little bit. Let's see if we can get it to interact with us. Not much, not too much interaction in the axial strength. Just with lower values, I guess lower than 10, it looks like. Get some shrinking there. All right, and I imagine that a lot of these settings they're going to have more or less impact depending on on the geometry that you're you're live soaping let's say all right so we've looked at that pretty good we looked at the rod now we have we have limit and strength for the plastic anchor and those are both set to one and I looked at this in the very beginning of this tutorial, if you remember. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make number sliders between zero and let's say let's say ten with some decimal places. Okay, so that's that one is one and that one is one. So they're both at one. So let's freak it out by plugging zero in. So reset it. Yeah, we get it. We get it to shrink. Now let's let's look at the minimum value to not be zero because it doesn't like zero. So I'm putting in point zero five. Okay, so we're getting some some tuning there. All right, strength is set to one. I'm going to copy and paste this number slider. Plug that into strength. So that's, they become weaker or stronger. So it changes the way the surface is spanning. All right, doesn't like that. So I'm gonna lower that strength a little too strong. Okay. All right, so lots of inputs, lots of, lots of variations we could get. Lots of control. Okay, so I want to look at another part of this live soap capsule, which is which is a volume, which is adding volume. And to do that, I'm going to save this. To do that, I want to go back to my original box. So I'm going to turn on show, and I'm going to copy this. hide this one. Alright, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna explode this and get rid of this and get rid of that. And then I'm gonna join that together. Alright, so the tricky part now <laughs> is gonna be 
getting with all these tweaks and settings we made, getting the live soap to span between this mesh. So let's try that. So let's set one mesh. All right, we'll reset it. Oh, did we do it? Looks like we did. All right, success. All right, so let's look at let's look at this use volume. So this is another one of these that you boolean toggle with a true false. Okay. So if we toggle this on, all right, so you see there's a little bit of inflation to this. All right, so this, I think this is, this one is a lot more helpful for tweaking the shape of the minimal surface. So there's also a input for volume change, which, which is set to zero. So let's, let's go big on this one. So negative a thousand and positive a thousand. I'm going to reset that. That's negative 1,000. Oh, I, I was hoping for, for, for more. All right, so this is it's because this is set to false. All right, there we go. Get that. So now we're blowing it up. It's like when you, you blow in the straw. All right, so that's pretty cool. And then in the other direction, in the positive direction, you're going to be able to, to tighten that up. Eventually, you could, you could break it. There you go. I broke it there. Oh, it comes back. So I, I like this. I think there's a lot, of, a lot of adjustment you can do with this one. More so, I think, more so, it's just a little bit more user-friendly than, than some of these other ones. But... I think knowing all of them combined is probably the best. All right, so let's let's introduce the grab back into this and see. So I'm gonna change that to true. All right, so now I'm able to to deform that. So I'm really changing the shape of that. All right, I think, I think we've covered it all. Oh, the, one more bonus in there. Uh, let's, look at, let's look at Weaver Bird. A lot of you guys, I'm sure, use Weaver Bird. If not, you can just Google search Weaver Bird 3D, and you can download that plugin. And what this is going to do is you can see that the mesh isn't as smooth as it could be. I'm going to reset it. I'm going to turn off the grab. Okay, so it's not as smooth as it could be. So what we can do is we can use Weaver Bird for some mesh smoothing. And I'm gonna keep the mesh made out of triangles. You see it's a nice triangular mesh. I'm gonna keep that by using, you know, under Weaver Bird, I'm gonna use the Weaver Bird loop subdivision, which keeps it as triangles. Go ahead and plug that mesh in. Take the preview now and plug the Weaver Bird capsule into that. Okay, let's hide the Weaver Bird capsule. Okay, so now if we look at the difference, so here is the original and here is the Weaver Bird, so a lot more triangles. Okay, and then this also has a level, and this can go smoother. It can go between, it can be one, two, and three in terms of more or less subdivision. So one is less subdivision. So let's make a number slider between 1 and 3. And we'll take a look at that. So there's 1. There's 2. And there's 3. Oh, there's 3. So you can get really smooth with that. All right. I think 1, I keep saving this thing. I think. I'd love to be able to switch it back to those two boxes, those two mesh boxes. Let's see if we can do it. Okay. 
set one mesh. Let's reset this. Let's hide these. All right, we have we have a success, and that's that's a really high detailed mesh. Now I can see my mesh edges, and you might not see those at home, so you got to make sure that your preview mesh edges are on. And Control M is the is the shortcut for that. I have to be Control M will maximize the viewport in Rhino, but in Grasshopper, Control M will toggle those mesh lines on and off. All right, I hope you found this useful. We really dug pretty deep into it. Let me know if you have any comments. Leave them below. If you have some better ways to do it, if you have some questions. If you found the video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe. All right, I will see you next time.